Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the YouTube channel of Affirm Family Ministries. I am Prophet Natalie J. Guerra, and I'm so excited to be coming to you guys today with this, um, really this really important message that the Lord has placed on the, the heart of the ministry to disseminate to you guys. Um, but this is a little bit different than the usual way that we've conducted business before between the ministry and our subscribers. Um, this is really a, a special day for a special evening rather for all of us here. Um, some know about, I don't think most know, but, um, I am not an island. I am actually one person of a fivefold ministry that the Lord has uh, commissioned to put together. So um, I always reference the fact that I operate in uh, unison with the team, but uh, the team has never been formally introduced to you guys. So today um, our team makes our debut. Unfortunately, two of our members couldn't be here today, but um, we have our we have three of our members out of our fivefold that could be here today. And from now on, um, I will be giving the usual prophetic words that the Lord has me give just by myself. But I will say that from now on, there will be a combination of that in addition to videos that are going to be filmed with us in unison as a team. We are a fivefold ministry with each uh, of our five varying members holding a specific mantle within the fivefold. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce, reintroduce myself and introduce everybody else on the team that is here with us. So um, I'm Prophet Natalie J. Guerra, and um, my position in the ministry is, uh, is the founder and CEO. And on the side of our screen, we have, I want to welcome our apostle, Apostle Samuel Negron. Um, say hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. So he is our apostle. And we are so blessed. Samuel is our covering. Um, and in addition to that, Samuel is also our chief operating officer of spiritual care. So he is our, I'm the CEO and he is our COO. And on the bottom of our screen, we have Ms. Rachel Reese, who is our prophetic evangelist of the ministry. Want to say hello, Rachel? Hi. And she's our lead advocate um, for the ministry, advocating for, for um, all that we do within the communities and the localities, especially with women and children. So uh, today we're dismissing our teacher and our pastor, but um, we're so happy to come to you today with um, our, our three of us. But um, the Lord has really put it on the ministry's heart. Uh, we've been communicating for this and preparing for this, I would say for about the past like month and a half, right guys? Just kind of yeah. working behind the scenes, allowing the Lord to really just download to us um, what is on his heart for his remnant. Um, more specifically, he wanted us to film a word about the difference between somebody operating in the office of a prophet from a pure place and a like really being called to that office versus what we're seeing a lot today in modern day society and the so-called Christian church and people gaining a following are prophets for profit, prophets for P-R-O-P-R-O-F-I-T. And the real thing behind that is they're really not called to that office, or if they were, they've lost and departed from the main thing, which is Jesus Christ, and they have not kept the main thing, the main thing, and they're now operating from a place of profit, and they're serving mammon instead of Yeshua, and that is huge, and the Lord has really, really, really put a, a heavy calling on our hearts to speak on this, to seek the Lord regarding revelation and um, as deep as the Lord would allow us to go in this season to bring you a word about the Lord's revel revelation about what he feels about all that's going on. That's basically, uh, let's be honest, guys, corrupt in the church setting right now that are instead of bringing the sheep to him, really they're the sheep are continuing to depart and go down a rabbit hole. They're not staying on the narrow path because these prophets for profit are not honoring Yeshua. They're operating by bowing to the spirit of mammon. So they're not leading people into the fold. They're actually leading people astray. People are getting hurt as a result in the church and needing further deliverance or healing. And as we know, 
the word says that, you know, church is like a hospital. People already come in with issues. We don't need to continue to compound more issues on the church when they already come in wounded. That's not the Lord's plan. But when you're operating from a place of for profit, people with people who are already wounded and need healing and deliverance are being compounded with double whammies of needing further healing and deliverance from false mentors, false spiritual mothers and fathers, and being led astray off of the narrow path from people who are not operating from a pure place. And as a team, we've been seeing this time and time again of people needing deliverance from coming out of coming out of an improper covering or coming out of honoring a so-called vessel vessel that's operating from a place of calling themselves a prophet, but they're really only for profit. And people are being hurt left and right and needing further deliverance on top of what they already need initial deliverance and healing from. And it's just, we have a heavy heart from it. We don't like it. Um, each and every one of us takes our calling and where we operate from the office that we're called to very seriously with honor, reverence, and respect and from a place of purity and a place of obedience and submission unto Jesus Christ. So um, it's really hard to operate from that place and see other people not operating from that place. But hey, even though you see people operating from that place, unless the Lord has called us to judge them or speak on them, we don't. And quite frankly, as a team, we have been operating behind closed doors, delivering and saving people from people who are under wrong coverings and dealing with the aftermath of that, never speaking on it, never calling anybody out, never diming anybody out. But people are coming to us to for the deliverance to come out of that. And we're just we're helping them. But um, we don't act out of times and seasons. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We operate according to when the Lord says us to release. And so we've kept quiet about what we know. <laughs> <laughs> what we see and we've allowed the Lord to dictate the times and season and our steps in our walk and as a ministry. So we haven't spoken on it. Caveat, we haven't spoken on it yet, but the point of time and place has now come for the Lord to call us out of the cave and to speak on the matters that we've been secretly dealing with helping the remnant um, because they've been improperly exposed to profits for profit and have been severely, severely harmed um, spiritually first and foremost, by people who are operating this way. But secondly, have been, and this really sucks, have been financially robbed by people, left with utterly nothing. People taking from widows, people taking from the poor, people taking from people who really don't have anything to give. And so we've kept quiet on this because the Lord said it's not time yet. It's not time for, it's not time for your team to deal with this. But um, now is the time. So we're here today because we're going to talk about each one of us kind of, we're going to dialogue and give input on what the Holy Spirit has revealed about um, what is the, what is the, thank you, Holy Spirit, the deeper undercurrent and undertone of what, why, what is being done. Um, number one, two, what does the Lord Jesus Christ have to say about all of this? And then three, what are some practical tips that we can give you guys as a team to for you to be able to discern, am I under the covering or alleged covering? I should say, thank you, Holy Spirit of a false prophet how do i know how do i know and discern the times and seasons and how do i know if they're real so um the last step will be very pragmatic and and basically tactical steps for you to be able to discern am i under the covering where the lord wants me to be and so um before we go ahead and, and dive deeply into this word i'm going to have apostle samuel go ahead and open up open up Open us up in prayer. Would you, brother? Sure, well, dear Holy Father, Lord, we come to you before your beloved son, Jesus Christ, through the amazing gift that your son has given us after he ascended. Yes, Holy Spirit. Father, I ask that these words that you're getting, getting ready to release, that they open up the eyes of those who have been deceived. And Father, I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, through Christ, the King of Kings, that conviction may hit anyone who has operated false, yes. and that they may repent as well. You know, I know to some these words may sound harsh, but they come with gentleness at the same time. We speak love and we speak your grace, just like you said this morning. You're sad, but there's still grace. Mm -hmm. So we release every word that will be spoken through my beloved sister, Natalie. We release them with light and with grace 
with purity, with conviction. We release the same thing with the words of my beloved sister Rachel, as well as with the words that I will be releasing, all in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father. We cover all of this with your glory. Because when your glory covers, when your glory covers, the enemy cannot even come near to the ears and whisper to the carnal ears of others who will be listening to this. So we just thank you, Father, and we just bless everyone right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. So um, when I was uh, preparing for this word, um, the first verse that the Lord led me to that wanted me to open up was Matthew chapter 7, verse, verse 15, which says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Catch that. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. And I think that's an important um, an important memo for us as the remnant to really store in the back of our head is not I mean, let's be mindful. That's why discernment is so important, especially in this hour of where we're at in the church is because last time I checked guys and Rachel, you can agree and brother Samuel can agree. No false prophet is coming out and being like, I serve the enemy. Come follow me. <laughs> the scripture specifically says they come to you in sheep's clothing. So they're coming disguised, which means you have to be on point. You have to be on your game because if you are not, you are going to be easily deceived by people who are operating in divination and witchcraft. Their ultimate goal is to be sent into the church, either to take down the church because they're in a covenant or they're a bona fide witch or warlock, or if they're not, they were once operating from a pure place in the mantle of the office of a prophet or apostle. However, they have now crossed that line into divination. So there's some that are infiltrating like on just straight assignment people. And if you don't believe it, it's out there. They are operating from their coven. They're operating from, from, their, from their place of a position of a warlock in the demonic realms. And they are specifically sent on assignment to destroy ministries and the remnant. Okay. They know what they're doing. And then there are those who once operated from that pure place and either are aware or not aware that they are no longer operating from their prayers and purity. Their, their prayers have now crossed the line into divination and they're doing witchcraft on people and they're calling it the prophetic. So we have two types of people infiltrating the church, but the two types are easily deceiving God's remnant. Um, so beware was the first step that the Lord wanted me to remind you guys to be mindful of because no one's going to come and be like, oh, you know, yes, I, I can discern that they're the one because uh, they were because the signs are all over the place. The signs are hidden. God said that he talks to his people in parables. So catch, excuse me, catch that. He talks to his people in parables. So it's not so easy to come out. It's like they're talking in parables too. These wolves and sheep's clothing, they're speaking, but they're talking to you guys in parables. That's why discernment is so important. What are they saying? I mean, Rachel and I have been in the church, the church in a woman setting. Do you remember Rachel? Yeah. And there was a woman operating in witchcraft. Bless her heart. We prayed for her. We prayed for her. But man, we were, when we were doing our women's group, we would leave there all jumbled up because we didn't have the opportunity to just listen to all these women's stories. Well, everybody was operating, listening to everybody share a story. Rachel and I were taken out and dismantling things that this witch was doing in the spirit realm because she knew that we were anointed and appointed glory to God. But we were, I was all that to say this. Rachel and I weren't there to share our, our testimony. Glory to God. If our testimony helps deliver some of those women, that's great. But we were there on an assignment, dismantling everything that the witch that went in there was doing in the hours to the woman. And I got to tell you, by the end of the time that this uh, this woman's group was finished, this witch actually had a following, right, Rachel? She had yeah. gathered a certain remnant from the woman's group who were following her. And, and they just believed that she was the sweetest, sweetest woman looking out after them. And, you know, I pray to God for her repentance. And I pray that she is. But they're not going to come out and say, here I am. I mean, this lady would literally, what was it, Rachel, wrap flowers? 
yeah. flowers that she had done spells on, place them in the Bible and try to hand them out at the women's group. And then yeah. the Lord identified to us that those were not holy flowers, that there was a spiritual, there was a, there was warfare attached to those flowers and witchcraft and spells that she had done that. So when those people touched them and play, she wanted to actually place these flowers that had witchcraft done on them, these dried flowers, put them as a bookmark inside your Bible. Wow. And these women were unknowingly placing these dried flowers that had spells on them in the Bible that were from the bonafide witch. She didn't come out and say, I'm a witch. It took discernment. Honestly, for even us as Rachel as ministers, we have to second guess ourselves a few times, right? Rachel, we were like, yeah, no, but I'm sorry. Abba doesn't lie. Abba doesn't, we were like, no, it can't be. No, no. But this, you know what? After a while, after a few sessions at women's group, we were like, I'm sorry, honey, bunny, the writing's on the wall. I hope you repent because you would have a high office in Jesus Christ if you were to repent and do a U-turn. But right now you are not operating that way and you're gaining a following and we really know what you're doing behind closed doors. But I'm saying all that to say this, they don't come out and be like, yes, <laughs> I'm secretly on a mission. It is so covert. It is so covert. Um, and she gained a following. She gained a following to this day. I believe she still goes to church. Glory to God. I hope she's delivered. Um, she had a heck of a lot of potential. But she knew she knew scripture, didn't she, Rachel? Yes, she did. Oh, she knew scripture. Oh, she knew scripture. All that to say this. They're not going to come out and be like, bing, jack in the box, here I am. That's why discernment is so important because if you don't, you're going to be led off the narrow path and be careful and mindful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Be careful and mind mindful who you give revelatory information to guys. Be careful who you give revelatory information to everything. The Lord downloads to you in secrecy at fourth watch or private about your life. It's not for everybody's ears. That's for you. You can't go sharing. Oh, the Lord told me I'm going to open this business or the Lord told me I'm going to do this. It's sad to say, I wish I could be up here today saying you could be so trusting of everybody in the church. I really wish. I really wish that was that message, but it just isn't. It just isn't. Some things have to stay private. A good example is how, we've been operating as a team now since when, guys? Since last year. Since last year, yeah. yeah. Since last year. But I mean, it was prophesied that I was going to have a team. The Lord was going to use me to form a team way back in, uh, I think I first got the word in 2019. And I released it to Rachel and I released it like to two other people, but uh, nobody else knew that there was going to be a team because it wasn't for everybody's ears. We already dealt with enough warfare. We already dealt with enough warfare just to have the team here. And I, we can speak from truth. We've already had to have some adjustments because people were disobedient. Right, guys? Yeah. Had to have yeah. some adjustments. It was supposed to be M7 now, M5. We already had to have some adjustments. Okay. But God is faithful. Amen. Praise Jesus. So the words are not for everybody's ears. We've, I've been operating with this word from behind the scenes since 2019, that there would be the formation of a team. And number two, I've had to be obedient to make adjustments for people who were disobedient. And number three, uh, we've already been formed and operating since last year. People. But was it time to go public? And no. Because God dictates the times and seasons, people, and everything is not for everybody's ears. We already have warfare. We don't need to have any warfare of, of being eager beaver and sending out memorandums of that I have a team beforehand. No, we've been operating stealth move wise behind the scenes since last year. Not everything is for everybody's ears. So be mindful. That was a word for somebody. That was a word for somebody. But beware of false prophets who aim and come at you in sheep's clo clothing because they're, they're not going to come out and say, here I am. I worship the enemy. I'm here on an assignment. If you're looking for them to say that, it's not going to happen, people. It's not going to happen. So be mindful. If the Lord gives you a hint that they're not operating from a place of purity, are you in? Run. Run, run, run. Run. Run and find yourself a good home or a good church that the Lord has led you to because they're not going to come out like Jack in the box and say, I'm here. This is really my mission. All right, brother, what is on your heart to talk about today? What is well, on your heart to talk about today? Um, there's a lot. <laughs> there's How about a it, lot. brother? How about it? <laughs> a lot. Um, first and foremost, um, <clears throat> and I'm going to release this now. I, uh -huh. I, I have it pinned on, on one of my uh, social media accounts, but 
-hmm. you know, um, last year, and it was, it was a word, but it was more of a question that the Lord asked me, right? Um, and it, it just blew my mind. Um, let me find it here real quick. <laughs> so, um, He ended up asking me a question, and that question was, what makes a prophet so great? What makes a prophet so great? What makes a prophet so great? Yeah. Obviously, I know the answer is, I want to know. <laughs> All right, I actually want to know. So what the Lord reveal? Um, and I'm going to reveal it right here. Now, <clears throat> again, I'm going to repeat. So if anyone's listening, it might contradict, you know, um, who we are. Again, you know, I'm operating under the mantle mm -hmm. of an apostle, but. I am a fool because my number one rule thing is, you know, I operate as a son first, right? And from there, you know, we see my, we, that's how we are. But this is what the Lord had revealed to me. What makes a great prophet so great? My son, I tell you this truth. A prophet is not great by all accuracy that they speak from my spirit and mouth. A prophet is not great by all the amazing signs and wonders, for there are children who operate in greater. A prophet is not great by all the decrees and declaring a prophet is so great because they speak accuracy according to the glory of the father they teach others to walk with me and the father a great prophet is one who brings the children straight to the father and one who can show them the ways of the kingdom my righteousness and myself their lord a great prophet is one who walks in fullness of the Father and teaches others how to do the same. A prophet who understands this truth is one who moves freely in all the ministering gifts of the Spirit because they understand the full fold through sonship and oneness with the Father. These are the great prophets of the kingdom. Sons who walk in the fullness of the Father through me, the reigning Christ and Lord of all. No one has come in flesh to destroy death with the glory of the Father. It was the resurrected glory of Son of Man and Son of God as one once again. Like it was in the beginning of creation, who destroyed death and took back the keys of all the fallen kingdoms. The great prophets know this truth and teach those who desire to be sons of God as my spirit of truth and life reveals the same revelations to all who truly desire to be sons in the new creation inside of me where the father has placed all who believe the same truth goes for apostles pastors and all, all who seek me for there is no fivefold nor there never was that is all man's foolish idea from their spirit not mine it has always been about being a full fold a full fold produces a hundred it has always been being fully immersed in oneness with me and the Father through the living Holy Spirit of truth, whom I sent to be your teacher to teach you these truths. Now you have an answer that was never revealed by men themselves, but by the great I am that dwells inside of you from the Holy Spirit, the holiest of them all. He is your friend and brother as I am. We are one with the Father, Samuel. So, I mean, I know it kind of contradicts, you know, um, but then again, man takes everything biblically. And yeah. when he revealed that to me, um, and we see this a lot in the prophetic, um, we see that a lot of prophets like to keep children enslaved to death. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you can't hear from God. I'm the only one that can hear from God. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, maybe Old Testament ways in a sense, but yeah, I like to remind people that, you know, the same access I have to him, we all do. You know, and we, we can seek them in that same manner. That's why Jesus said, come seek me. You know, mm -hmm. seek my righteousness and seek my kingdom. Mm -hmm. So um, my advice, right, if anyone's following prophets out there, make sure that they're leading you straight to the Father and not to themselves. Yeah. You have you have prophets with um, big <laughs> followings, small followings, um, and barely no followings, you know, mm -hmm. um, he also gave me another word. It was, a, it was a quick, short word that I had to release. But, you know, he did tell me, tell my prophets it's time for them to stop being the Holy Spirit of my children. Hmm. Let the Holy Spirit 
be the spirit to guide them to me. Yeah. So in other words, if you're constantly drawing up a word, right? <clears throat> a lot of the times that word is not coming from the Lord. A lot of the times that word is coming from your imagination or divination. And don't get me wrong, divination, there's accuracy in divination. Yeah, because there's monitoring spirits. They're monitoring every action. There's going to be something. They're, they're called thank you, Holy Spirit. They're called familiar spirits for a reason. They're out there monitoring in the spirit realm what you do. So, you know, that's how psychics get their supernatural juice. That's why they're they're not as accurate as the Holy One. But there's a little bit, there's a little bit of supernatural juice going on there because those monitoring spirits have a little bit of accuracy because, hey, they're monitoring you. So it's not uncharacteristic for a psychic to know a certain percentage of information that's accurate same thing with a with a, a former prophet or a false prophet who's now operating and blurred that line and is now cross divination there's gonna be a little bit of truth to what they say beware yeah. beware um i actually encountered myself uh, a false prophet i told you about it sam i told rachel about it uh, actually, somebody from my past who's now completely, completely, utterly crossed the line into pure divination. Uh, praise Jesus. At one point in time, they were operating as a pure vessel. No mas, no more. Um, clearly crossed the line to pure divination. But I actually uh, met up with them about, I think, like six months ago. And um, there was some there was some on point accuracy to what they were saying. But then when I left their presence, they tried to incite fear in me about what about what something or somebody wanted to do to me that was very malevolent. So they were trying to incite fear so that when I left their presence, I was going to leave fearful about somebody trying to harm me. That's not of that's not of the Lord. And then they actually said, I need you to come back here so that I can do da, 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 to you to relieve you. First of all, I don't need you to, if something malevolent is going on in my life, I'm not saying that people aren't out to harm. I have a ministry. I do operate from a pure place of the pure mantle of a prophet. I know since the Old Testament times, people are always trying to harm a prophet. So it's not unreasonable for me to find out information that somebody is trying to plant something malevolent behind my back. That That's not abnormal. Preachers and pastors and ministers all over the world are getting hate and threat mail. So it's not obscure. But um, we're not fearful about it. We take action. We dismantle things. Or if, if in the natural legal action has or ramifications have to be done, we handle our business. But this person wanted me to leave, depart in a place of fear and then come back to them for them to be able to undo everything that was going on malevolent allegedly in my life. And it's like, you know what? And I told them, well, if something malevolent is going, and I told sister Rachel this, I said, if something malevolent is going on in my life and it needs to be dismantled, why don't I come back and you can teach me what you do and how to dismantle it? Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to operate from a place that you have control of the person and tell them to keep coming back to you like a psychic. You want more? Keep coming back to me. Keep coming back to me. No, I'm needing to go back to you, but because you're teaching me the skills and imparting wisdom, thank you, Holy One, and knowledge for me to be able to handle it myself because we all come together, amen, for the equipping of saints, like scripture says. But this person didn't want to do it. I said, okay, so wh why don't we just handle it now and you can teach me how to dismantle whatever it is that you're doing that I'm not already doing. So you can teach me how to dismantle this malevolent act that's going on behind my back in warfare. Oh no, I got I got to be the one to handle it. I I, I got to be the one to handle it myself. I got to be able to handle it for you. You just need to come back. But they were adamant that they couldn't teach me how to do it, that I needed to get it from them and that they weren't going to teach me what they did. And then here was the clincher was there was some accuracy in the words that they were saying because the team had talked about some things that were going on behind my back so I could affirm and attest to some of the things that this false prophet was saying that was going on behind my back and I literally looked at them and said I know and they were like no you don't know and I was like no actually I have a team and I know this stuff is going on behind my back <laughs> uh, well you need to come here because I need to dismantle it for you only I could handle it and I literally looked at them and said, this is not new news. Everything is revealed to you has already been revealed to the, through Jesus to me and my team. And uh, we have already handled it and dismantled it. And I don't operate from a place of fear for my life. God's got yeah, me. Yeah. And I operate in wisdom. 
you know, I'm a woman in today's society. I operate with wisdom. Pray, thank you, Jesus. But um, I'm not operating from a place of fear. I don't need to come back here. This is not new news. And they were like in disbelief. And I called them out. It's not new news what you're telling me. And nothing needs to be dismantled because it's already been dismantled. It's not going to harm me in Jesus' name. No weapon forged against me will prosper. And if you really wanted to help me, you would be teaching me the skills on what you wanted to teach me to dismantle. But they were adamant that they couldn't. They just wanted to get me back. It's like a street psychic, like wants to get you back to come back for more. And then the clincher was, I was telling Rachel, is I don't know if I told you this, brother, but they started to tell me that um, ways that I needed to cleanse my home to get rid of the the things that were astral projecting in my house. And now I just listened for, for, I just listened for like what I just listened for shits and giggles because I wanted to hear their point of view. And uh, they were like, well, first you need to throw bleach down your, uh, bleach down your your toilet bowl and then I was like okay I symbolically I can I can kind of be on par with that okay bleach is cleansing it's not totally off that maybe the holy one would tell me to cleanse my toilet bowl if something oper is operating through a portal through through the through an open portal underground or something okay it's a little off but totally not unbelievable so I was like okay put bleach down my toilet what else and salt because we are the salt of the earth okay but then here was the clincher. Like they lost me after that. And that's how, you know, they were totally off in, 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 in Cracker Jack box land. Uh, bleach down your toilet, Natalie. Uh, you also need to put salt down your toilet to rid of the spirits that are astral projecting in your house, trying to kill you. Uh, nutmeg, because nutmeg means this followed by cinnamon. And I was like, oh, hell no, 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 no. No, no, maybe bleach because symbolically bleach could mean purity. I, I could kind of jump on board with that. Uh, salt, okay, scripturally, we always saw the world that there's an open portal because we do know that there's marine spirits operating through tunnels and stuff underground. So, I mean, I, I kind of maybe the bleach, kind of maybe the salt, but uh, you, no, I'm sorry, witches and warlocks use nutmeg in their incantation. I know cinnamon, cinnamon is an exact conduit that witches and warlocks use when they cast spells. Even ask Jenny Weaver, she just she just did a thing on this that witches are are casting spells using cinnamon. It, it was right then. I, I told Rachel, I was like, Rachel, I left the house. She was like, why it didn't go well? I was like, you know what? This was actually a person I was trying to make amends with, guys. I was trying to make amends with. So I went in good faith because the Lord was like, I want you to go try to make amends. And when I left, the Lord was like, you tried, you were obedient and you tried, but see, they're still operating from a place of impurity, but, but you were faithful to what I asked you to do. But do you see how bad it's gotten for them? And you know what? Sin is its own consequence, people. Sin is its own consequence. This person is operating from a place of divination and knows I'm operating from a place of profit in the mantle, but I'm operating in purity and wanted to bring me back as if they were some sort of psychic, but they're not, they're dying. Yeah, they're, they're, no, yes, they are sin is its own consequence. You never want to dabble in witchcraft, people. And you never want to cross that line when you're operating in a ministry to a place of divination just to try to gain control over your following or for profit. This person wasn't about profit. So it wasn't about it wasn't about profit. For this person, it was more about control. Yeah. Um, but you either or you never want to operate for control and for money or either or for this person was about control, but, um, they were legitimately dying. Their flesh is dying. They are not well at all physically. And the Lord said, I don't even inhabit this house anymore. I once did because I used that person excuse me, as my vessel, they're no longer operating purity. I don't even inhabit this house. I was straight legit told friends when I left that house, do not believe a word that this person said to you when they were speaking to you today, because it was completely out of a place of pure divination. I no longer inhabit in this house. I was like, wow. And the Lord said, here's the manifestation daughter. You've known this person for X amount of years. And because they're operating now in witchcraft, their life isn't looking good. They, I mean, I'm not saying this lightly, people. I'm saying this to warn people. When you operate in Jesus, you can go through hell and back. But you, there's something about these people who follow Jesus, and I can attest to this. Thank you, Jesus. Where you can go through hell and back, and people will look at you and be like, "You don't look like what you went through. You don't look like what you went through because you got the J glow. You can be like 50, but you don't look 50, you know. Um, but people who are operating on witchcraft. 
They die early. They die, they die prematurely. And you know what? I got to tell you, this person's been operating witchcraft for a long time. And they are on death's door. And I'm not saying that symbolically, literally, medically, they are on death's door. And the Lord said, let that be a testament to you, daughter, to always stay pure. And I was like, ain't got to tell me twice, Jesus. Ain't got to tell me twice. Ain't got to tell me twice. Um, but the Lord said, but you're going to use this word someday in the near future. And here I am today as an example of sin is its own consequence when you're operating from a place of divination. He's literally on death's door. And it was so sad. Like, I genuinely loved this person. Like, not 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 a romantic love, but in a person in my life. Like, I cared for them. I don't want to see anything bad happen to them. But they're on death's door. But I couldn't believe it, people. They lost me with the whole cinnamon and nutmeg, throw it down your toilet bowl. I was like, oh my gosh, man, this is, this is street legit witchcraft. Now you've just departed. You have just departed. Yeah. It's no, out uh, there. It is out it there. Is, is and no, awesome. no one is exempt. I mean, it's trying to come after me. So trust me, no one is exempt. You know, one of one of the things that the Lord has revealed to me, well, actually he revealed it to me right now as you were speaking, is that he has more grace on those who who are, you know, into witchcraft because they yeah. never knew Christ, right? They never, they know no better. They like know it's like well, when you know Christ, you know the ways, and you have entered one way, yeah. or, and you have literally entered and you passed the veil, <clears throat> and you just go, it's like basically backstabbing it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and, and as you were speaking, he was bringing up that revelation. Well, what a lot of people ah, say it, okay, I'll say it. What a lot of Christian mystics, I don't know where you're going with this, Lord, but go ahead. What a lot of Christian mystics fail to realize is that, you know, God is a God of grace, you know, and, and I, I get their part. I get their vibes. Um, you know, the Lord stopped me. Like, he he was showing me some things about them. There's a lot of some purity, but they're just, they just want to stay naive, you know, to yeah to, to the tricks of the enemy, right? Um, which I, I pray for all of them. But, um, yeah, he just has a, a harsh harsher hand of consequences like i am a, a a i am that door of grace but how can i show you grace when i gave it to you to come in and now you decide to go to this one and you're serving him as a son doing these things so i tell people like yeah you know god does have grace and there's a limit to his grace mm -hmm. we just don't know when and at the same time we have to be vigilant we have to just i i, I like to play it safe let me continue to seek him. And I don't exactly. have time to pray. I'm going to talk to him on my I, I have to have some <clears> kind of <throat> communication with that relationship to yeah. have me focus on him, you know? Yeah. Like I've had I have had the privilege of releasing a few words of definitely not my um definitely not something I was ever gonna release, but I have prayed for in, in my in my lifetime of operating from this office and having a ministry, God has bestowed the privilege on me of praying over a few people and releasing releasing a word of knowledge about what their what their spouse will look like or about what their partner looks like but caveat i never like say oh yeah come back to me for more information next week or oh my gosh you know what i got this word and the, and this is the interpretation oh no i'll release the word and i will say thing and it's only been a handful of times it's literally only been a handful of times that the lord has given me the honor to release somebody's spouse about what they look like and after i release the word i'm like hands off you don't need to come to me again asking me about what do i see because this was a word of the lord i'm not a psychic so don't come ask me what else do you see and number two i always tell them this was the word however god does talk in parables so just keep in mind that if it was a tall man be open that this could mean they are legitimately like above six feet in natural height or keep in mind God could be talking from a place of spiritual authority that they're tall and mighty in, in, in spiritual authority. So don't come back to me and six to me like you said, God released through you that I'm going to have a six, six foot four husband and my husband's father be like, you know what? I just released the word. If he gives me the interpretation, amen. Thank you, Jesus. But I always throw that disclaimer out. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Don't seek me. I just released the word at his vessel. Seek him for the interpretation. If he gives me interpretation in tandem, okay, praise God. But if he doesn't, I always throw that caveat of be open, be open, sister, be open, brother, because that could also mean this um god's ways are higher than our ways and i also 
I also throw that caveat too, when I give out prophetic words that the Lord has given to utilize me as a vessel, be open to change people, be open to change because some prophetic words are going to happen regardless. That is God's plan. Hands down. He's going to make it happen. Some prophetic words, though, are contingent, especially prophetic words that involve other parties. They're contingent on people's free will, and people don't get that. They want to cheat prophets like prophets or like psychics, and it's like uh, people have their free will. And what I find out, what I often find is people who are operating from a place of false prophecy or spirit of divination, they will try to give you as most details as possible so you can keep coming back to them. And when a real prophet operates, they just release the word and they're like, Sanar, thank you, Jesus. I don't even remember. And you can come back, you know, some of my words. yeah, you, God is speaking them because you can come back to them three years later and be like, don't you remember your prophecy? I'd be like, I don't know, honey, buddy. Jesus was talking through me. I don't even know what I said. Literally, I have written emails to people and prophesied things and they could come back to me and be like, don't you remember you prophesied that five years ago? Be like, I don't even remember, honey, what I wrote to you. That was Jesus operating through me. It's called the scribes anointing. It was probably angels writing that for me i just wrote it and sent it as the vessel as the holy vessel but honestly god was operating through me so i don't even remember what was sent because that's god's word that's not me but beware when they remember every detail about your life and they're like come back for more information because the true prophet is so busy prophesying according to god's will thank you jesus that they don't remember what happened yesterday they don't remember mm-hmm. what happened yesterday. They mm-hmm. don't. We like I can't tell you how many times people come back and be like, "Don't you remember you prophesied that?" I'd be like, <clears throat> "It's not that we don't remember. It, we vaguely remember. If it's something important, like oh, you were going to give birth to a baby girl, and like actually I had that at church, but you did use me to prophesy someone in the women's group that they were going to have a baby girl, and I actually saw that was in 2020 during COVID, and I actually saw them at church service last year, and she was prego, and I was like, oh my god." I jump for joy because that's like that's exciting when you do operate from the office and you see it come to fruition and it happened three years later three is the prophetic significance of complete and here she is prego and I was like I was like you know what I don't always remember a prophetic word because it's God operating through me but when it comes to things like marriages and babies some of those I do remember and I do remember God used me to prophesy that you were going to have a girl let me just ask it and I didn't even have to finish the sentence and she was like Natalie, it's a baby girl. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, yes, I do remember that. I was like, that word I do remember. And she's like, thank you, sister. I do remember you said that I was going to get pregnant with the girl we were trying and trying and trying wasn't going to happen. I was like, keep the faith. And and she's like, it's already changing my husband. You told me that having the baby girl would completely change my husband's life. And he's already like changed. God is using him to change his heart. Something about this baby girl is like changed my husband's heart. I was like, that's Jesus. I didn't bring glory and honor to me. I was like, thank you, Jesus. And that's the difference. I I wasn't like, yeah, let's have lunch, girl. And I could give you more details about what's coming next. (laughs) I was like. A real prophet, it's always. (sighs) See. We always glorify the Father in everything yeah. we do. I remember, okay, I'll, I'll bring it up. I remember uh, on the same week uh, <clears throat> I got baptized. We ended up going to uh, Tamalipas, Matamoros. And um, on the last day, uh, my sister in Christ, you know, those who don't know, if if, if, I, if you ever see me approach your child and anoint your child, just know. I was led to that child because I have a scroll that I had to swallow. Um, But um, yeah, (laughs) all the children there, you know, they were in that red scroll. So so we prayed and after praying, I I just, I went to the room quietly and I just, I just started thanking God because I've never seen God. Like I just got baptized that Mm -hmm. following week on a Sunday and I'm like, wow, I can't believe all of this is happening. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, kneeling down and I'm thanking God and then I just hear that loud voice not all prophets are going to make it mm-hmm. and I start weeping and weeping and weeping and crying and I, I that's why I, I felt my, my Moses face I'm trying to plead with God what can I do yeah he's like you can do whatever you want to do but not all of them. and I just kept weeping and he's like well I'll tell you what since you came to me and you glorified me in secrecy I'll give you a chance. After all, am, am I not a, a God of grace? Like, yes, you are. You are. You are. Yeah. So, um, 
But yeah, that's what we do. We glorify the Father in secret. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do get excited. You know? Yeah, like, like with that baby situation. I, I think I actually did say that day. Like, I did say that. Because, I mean, oh my gosh, you know, like, I mean, it's it's work. I mean, being being be operating from your office is is work, people. So from time to time, I'm going to add me. I'll be like, I, God did use me to say that. Because it's a little exciting. Yeah. When you start seeing them build a, the Holy Spirit, building a resume. Those are kind of warning signs. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Another thing that the Holy Spirit highlighted to me is, that, you know, a real child of God will never, you know, it's going to sound harsh. <laughs> Say it, brother. Will never prostitute the gifts. It's true, huh. though. Huh. Yeah. Explain, you know, brother, what you mean by prostituting the gifts. What right. do you mean? What I mean is this. Um, if, thank you. That's why I have it here. Um, here we are in the New Testament, um, Simon the Sorcerer, right? Uh -huh. On and we know that Simon the Sorcerer, he was intrigued you know, when he saw the apostles laying their hands, right? Yeah. So he wanted to do the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So he was act he actually wanted to buy the gift, mm -hmm. the impartation. He wanted to buy the impartation. Catch that, guys. The prostitution or exploitation of the gifts is wanting to buy the giftings wanting to purchase the gifts that have been bestowed upon somebody else continue so you know the apostle told him it's not for sale you can't buy it <laughs> you know <laughs> sorry charlie <laughs> this is why i'm so heavy on it you know it's like mm -hmm. you know i always lead people back to what jesus said you know if you truly believe in him you know what I'm saying? Like, if you truly believe everything he did, you two can do. Yeah. You know, and and if you actually repent from your ways, renew your mind to the point where, like, yeah, I want to walk more into this. You know, I'm gonna die to self. I'm gonna crucify this flesh. Flesh inheritance. I I want this inheritance. Mm -hmm. Wow, I can't believe that inheritance that, that he laid on me set me free, and that's part I need. It. So you know, when you're operating in love. It, you give away free right yeah and so what we see we've been seeing a lot lately is, is that you know people selling the impartation you know and that's that's another thing that um the holy spirit you know has been highlighting be beware you know there are warning signs you know um don't get me wrong um if you want to sow a seed, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Because you're feeling it in spirit. You know what I honor mean? Honor is different than something else. Honor is honoring the prophet according to the word of God is definitely something else. And I'm going to segue now because you you just kind of set me up to the next portion of our segment on what the Lord wants me to talk about, which are steps about knowing that you're dealing with a false prophet. Because I we could we could be here all day having this podcast, and if you, people people are just going to be like. People are going to be like, so how do I, bottom line prophets, how do I know? How do I know? So God did give me some tangible, some tangible steps. I think you, Holy Spirit, some identifiable steps for his remnant to know, am I following a false prophet? What are the warning signs? And that's what you just said, brother, brother, excuse me. What are the warning signs that I'm following a false prophet or that my covering it has departed from its one true love and is now operating from a place of wanting to control me or wanting to operate from a place of, of just being for profit, P-R-O-F-I-T. So some of the warning signs, steps about knowing you're dealing with a false prophet number one look out for this guys look out for needing needing catch that needing to pay for healing or deliverance you should never have to calendar a calendar a, a session with somebody or a calendar a time for your healing and deliverance you because they're a bona fide ministry you may need to calendar a time because they're that busy <laughs> or they have certain times of business because they're human too and they have families and have other things to tend to so i'm not saying like if you have to calendar a time that that's a warning sign but if you're calendaring a time and they have a website that's a pay scale come and get your healing and deliverance um, pick from these time slots of when I can meet with you in person or through Zoom and it's a $150 fee and then I can see you on Zoom or then I can meet you at church. That's a red flag right there. That's a red flag because the gifts are without repentance. So if you're a ministry, excuse me, if you're a ministry that's operating from a place of purity and God has bestowed upon you the gift of, of being able to operate from a place of healing and deliverance to be able to deliver and heal people 
in the name of Jesus Christ, then he has called you to that. Freely, you have been given that gift and that impartation to be able to heal and deliver people. You're not charging that because that was a gift that was freely given to you. So you're supposed to be freely given back that to people. I'm not saying that if they have a website and are like, okay, I received healing and deliverance and they took like three hours with me. I want to, I want to honor that ministry. And so a seed to them of like a hundred dollars or $50 that's between you and Jesus. That that's just called honoring. <laughs> that's just called honoring the ministry and valuing that these are ministers and they have lives and they have family and they might have secular jobs too, because honestly, a lot of us a lot. That's another thing. Be aware of somebody who only does ministry and they make their entire money from ministry and, and, and that's it in their business. Because I got to tell you the most <laughs> pure ministers are working in ministry and, and having a family and having another job. Almost every pastor that I've met and I've worked with, and I've worked with a lot, they work a job that pays the bills, steward a family and are a pastor, unless God has called them to a place where they are working for a mega church and are getting a paycheck through that mega church. But that is not everybody. That is not everybody. But it seems like these social media pastors and prophets of today are making a living off their following. And you're like, what is their day job? Well, that's all I do is run my business. And it's a business that God gave me. Maybe God gave you the initial designs, but maybe you were supposed to steward that in a secular job till he rose you. Because no, I've been in ministry now eight years, but I've been following Christ since I was a child. And I still have to work a secular job. I worked with executives from nonprofits and they were telling about their, their, their time when they were pastoring a church. And they were like, I was pastoring a church during the day and I was unloading pallets. I was unloading pallets at the grocery store at night to help pay bills because a pastor is a thankless job and it doesn't pay the bills. It, I didn't live off that. It was donations. I got to tell you, I run a ministry and the whole time I'm running a firm family ministries, I'm a, I'm a professor at a college making my living. And prior to that, I was a professor at, and working for a nonprofit paying my bills. And whatever money comes into the ministry is disseminated amongst my team where it's used to cover costs. If God wants to elevate us to the point where we're able to live off of the ministry, thank you, Jesus. Okay, maybe that's one day. But I'd be leery of the people that have advanced to levels in just a few years. And yeah. they're they're covering their entire bills and their entire rent and everything on just their entire business and their ministry. And you're like, what is your job? Well, God elevated to me that quickly. I'm not saying he can't. I'm not saying he can't. Caveat, it is very few and far between. It is very few and far between. If you follow a Joyce Meyer ministry, you will ask, how long did it take you to get there, ma'am? How long did it take you? Because surely I will tell you, she will tell you that her and her husband, Dave, were, were riding and staying at cheap motels or staying on the street when they were running their ministry. And they weren't saying, Jesus told me to tell you to buy me a plane. Yeah. Or like, what's your day job? Rachel's got a day job. I got a day job. Samuel's a full-time caregiver for his parents and operating as our COO. He's a busy bee. We're not just I don't I don't I don't charge for words. <laughs> yeah. We are and calendar. No. If people I, no, need <laughs> yeah, if people need healing and deliverance, we calendar okay. them on Zoom and then we bring them in and then we counsel them. Um it's just, you know, so be leery if you're having to pay for healing or deliverance, which is again is different from God impressing on your heart. Hey, they're giving me their time. I respect, honor, and reverence. I have and, the money. I'm going to bless them. That's different. Um, yeah. Beware. Step number two, beware if they're saying things like this in order for this to come to you or in order for you to obtain favor on this regarding this word of the Lord, you must show this amount of money here. And it's not, it's not a suggested amount. It's not a suggested amount. Like God, the Lord really pressed on my heart. And I know it's going to sound crazy, but he did press on my heart, like multiples of four, but that's between you and Jesus. Okay, that's a little different. That, that, Maybe you just say that. You have people, oh, the Lord said, uh, so five, five, five. Yeah, and it's like, okay. Three, three, I'm like, um, okay. And I'm like, yeah, no, that doesn't yeah. play out. And, and they don't even, they don't even, it's not even a suggestion. Like, it's between you and God, but the Lord did highlight the digit three. So that's between you and God, but I'm going to leave it. But something about the digit three and just leave it there. Now I'm talking about the people that demand and say, in order for you to be able to receive this word or have favor on it, um, God told me so multiples of five, 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 or so this amount. And it's the, the entire sermon that therefore ends up becoming more about the multiples that the Lord impressed on their heart in the digits. And it becomes less and less and less about the word as 
the show goes on. And the reason why I'm using show is because that's the word the high, the Lord is highlighting me because it's not really a sermon. It's a show. Wow. Mic drop. It's not about a sermon. It's a show. It's not about a sermon. It's a show. So beware if they're saying, oh, you need to sow this amount of money. And God, some of you guys might be listening right now and be like, who would do that, guys? Who the heck would do that? Nobody is that susceptible. You might think that would never be you. You legitimately might think you're on the outside looking and be like, that will never be me. I will never be so immersed that I would look and listen to somebody on screen and be like, that is, that is of God. That is of God. That is of God. But I got to tell you, once you are sucked in, you're in. I, you, you I have sh- people, I have people tell me they never would have thought that would be them. And then they're wounded by the church. And then they hate the church and then and they hit the church them. and then we gotta and then we gotta deal with then the peer vessel got to deal with the healing and deliverance. I encounter a lot of people like that in the streets. Yeah, but um, you know, that's another highlight that um the Lord says, just 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 he says, because of the beast technology, yeah, the beast and the beast. Yeah, I mean it's all spiritual, all all connects, but you know, just just the signs. The signs. The, <laughs> the third the chats. <laughs> yeah, the third, <laughs> the third uh, sign. The third sign is operating from a place. Uh, beware if they operate from a place of operation where it's this for that. So it's more about a trans. They're operating their ministry from a transactional point of view rather than a transformational point of view. The whole reason God places people in leadership since the Old Testament is to be a catalyst and a vessel for change. Will they make mistakes? Absolutely. Okay. I make mistakes. I make six racial mistakes. We're not exempt. Okay. Since the Old Testament, people who were serving God made mistakes. So it's not about being pure to the point where you're not going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But the heart and the posture is is in a good place but beware of the ministry that's operating from a transactional place of operation where it's like this for that in order for your healing to deliverance we need this in order for you to get this then you need to stay under this ministry covering for x amount of years or in order to get this you need to be considered under my covering to be associated with me and if you all don't think that these clicks are real in christianity they are real these clicks within mystery in christianity and in churches are real where they're saying oh you have favor because they can see in the spirit realm that you're associated with me no i'm sorry i have favor in the spirit realm because i am a daughter of the king jesus christ i am a co-heir of christ thank you jesus he bought and paid for my sins and i am i am worthy because he calls me worthy and i have favor on my life because I'm obedient to him. And I have I have faith that I don't even deserve because he died on the cross for me, not because I'm under your covering and I'm tied to you. So beware of these little clicks that be like, if you want to get VIP status into, into this seminar, um, we're charging $30 and then you can meet the profit. And you guys might think I'm crazy, but this, this is happening well, and it's out there. I was actually going to go to somebody that I follow. I, I, I appreciate their ministry, but the Lord actually took me out of being able to watch their ministry because I lost it. I lost it when they were, when they made their first appearance to Cali and they were like, you can obtain, I mean, first of all, you had to pay for like $30 to go see them, which, you know, I, I honestly, I don't mind because I understand the global picture. The bigger picture is you might have to pay because they might have to rent the facility and they did fly out here from out of state and they need to cover those costs. So I'm not a, a, I'm not a frugal person to the sense that I'm not going to pay because I think, oh my gosh, everything should be free. Okay. I understand economics, people. I wasn't born yesterday. I understand tin stoffel. There's not, there's no such thing as a free lunch. I get it. I understand. I'm not, I'm not oblivious to the fact that there might be a cover charge because whoever is flying in that preacher needs to pay for the hotel, needs to pay for their meals to honor and respect them, ne- you know, needed to pay for that plane ticket wants to give them a love offering to pay them for their time for ministry work. So if they're going to charge 30 or $50 for an event, I get that. Hey, we need to bless them up too. That is their job. Ministry is their job. So I'm not, they want to charge a cover charge to get in. I get that. I get economics. My problem is, is that should be enough. You shouldn't be exploiting further and be like, so there's different admission is admission. If you need to charge a cover charge, because you need to cover the costs, That's fine. You need to rent the facility. You need to pay the pastor. I get it. It's business. I have a problem with there's different levels of admission. 
$50 for general admission. And then there's bleacher seats, which are cheaper. And then there's VIP admission where you get to meet the profit beforehand and network with them. And then there's VIP, VIP admission where you get to talk to them and have coffee or punch afterwards. If you don't, Rachel, remember I told you about this one? I think I told you about this one. I was like, I was so excited to go see him. I was like, so-and-so is coming in. And I was like, oh, they just lost me, man. They just lost me, man. You were so close. You were so close to gaining my, my, you know, like endorsement. But you know what? I'm gonna have to withdraw. I'm gonna have to withdraw. Like, I understand the cover charge, but VIP status, if I want to meet you. So my Christ doesn't even charge me VIP. Yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry. So beware of that in order to gain this for that, because in the kingdom, we are called to be to call to be bring about trans transformational change. God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ want to change you from the inside out. When you go to a ministry for for some sort of service, or they're providing you with a service or a gift of the spirit, it's to bring about change in your life. It's to bring about transformational change. It's not transactional change. We change when you give us this for that. That's not kingdom. So beware. Also, another thing to look out is <clears throat> when you start to be afforded more one-on-one -on -one time with certain people uh, with leadership in the ministry based on the amount you sow. Oh, I'm noticing that the higher amount I sowed in the church, the more time I got to spend with the people in leadership. And if y'all don't think this happens in ministry, it happens. The people who are high sowers, they get to uh, spend more time with the main pastor. They get to spend more time with the associate pastor. They're invited to lunches and brunches that other people aren't invited to. And if you all don't think this is a thing, it is a thing in the realms of ministry. It is legitimately a thing. Oh, I sold ten thousand dollars. Oh, well, they're looking. You know, the head of that, the head of that ministry is starting to look at you a little bit more favorably. They're giving you more time. You have their personal number to text them now. You can send them personal prayer requests. Um, beware of that. And then the downside that to that is you are slowly dismissed from their inner circle. The less and less money you sell. So your personal time with them starts to dwindle based on the amount that you sow. It goes up and based on the amount when you stop sowing, your personal one-on-one -on -one time or their personal responses because now you have their number to their text, you ain't a part of their inner circle. Or technically you are, but they're not. They're in ministry, so they're not going to be that mean and like formally kick you out. But you just see your responses are a little less. It takes you now three days to get back to you. And you're like, wow, it can't just be because they're genuinely busy. Because if they were genuinely busy, how come they got to me in a hot minute when I was sowing thousands? Yeah. <clears throat> but you see the difference when you sow less the 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 response time is, is not as quick. But when you sow more, it's like in a hot jiffy. And now I have their personal number. That's not equitable. That's not kingdom. I can genuinely tell you it takes me days to get back to messages. And it's not, it's, 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 it's not based on, you can't sow a certain amount and think, oh, I'm going to get expedited service with that or get her text message. I got to tell you, there's people to this day who still don't even have my personal number, people who follow the ministry and you're not going to get my personal number. You're going to get the ministry business number or you're going to get the PO box because I don't work like that. I don't give preferential treatment. And it's not how much you sow. If I take three days, I can assure you someone who sowed more money isn't going to get an expedited time. I am a working woman managing a ministry and a full-time career at the same time and have family. Everybody gets the same treatment. Unless you're part of my team, like my actual Sam or Rachel, you get, you do, or you're my mom or my niece or nephew, you get a little bit of expedited response. But yeah, beware if the more you sow, the more intimately you get to be involved with them. And then you slowly start to see that you're, you're just missed the less and less that you sow. That's a warning sign. Or, <clears throat> excuse me, the final warning sign that the Lord wanted me to highlight to you is you're told to stay in that ministry because if you leave this ministry too soon, 
the prophetic word that was released over your life by me might not come because you were hasty and you left too soon. That is straight witchcraft. And I can tell you that's been told to me before. That was legitimately told. I was under a wrong covering way back in the day when I first started ministry. And I was literally told the spirit of the Lord told me this, is, this person is starting to do divination and, and deviating from their call. I need you to depart from their ministry. And I didn't hesitate. But the minute I was open and honest with them and say, the Lord is calling me to leave your ministry. I was literally told. Remember those prophetic words about your life? Uh-huh. And I, I was young and naive. I'd hate for them to not pan out because you were hasty and didn't use discernment and left the ministry too soon. I got to tell you, I left anyways. I got to tell you, the minute I left, things started to soar for me. Things started to soar for me. I was held back in that ministry. The minute I left there was when the Lord used me to launch our own ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but that happens. They will try to control you and be like, I'd hate for you to not use discernment because it's about control. Or what was prophesied over you is not going to happen now because you left. I'm sorry. If Jesus said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Or if it's contingent on somebody's free will, I got to let it be to Jesus. Excuse me. People are going to do their free will. Um, or one of the things the Lord said you also need to watch out for is if someone actually tells you, you need to stay because if you don't stay, you won't advance spiritually to the next level in the kingdom. You need to stay in order to advance to the next level spiritually. You need to stay for the oil. Tell me that some of the ministries don't tell you that people. You need to stay to get the oil. Or you need to stay under this covering in order for you to elevate to the next level. Because the anointing comes through me. I I'm sorry, anybody. The anointing don't come through. That's a straight bull face lie. But the Lord says, beware if they tell you, you need to stay for the oil. Or you need to have the oil from this ministry because there's a special anointing on it. That's what we call commonly taking Psalm 133 out of context, insinuating that the blessing that the Lord gives freely isn't coming from Yahweh alone, but it's coming from God, then down to the vessel through the priesthood and then to you. So you're, you're about, you're getting it third will. It comes from God. Then it comes through me because I'm the priest and then it comes to you. So in order for you to get it, it's got to come through me. So you better stand under this ministry. They constantly take Psalm 133 out of context, which says, it is like precious oil poured on the head, running down the beard, down upon the collar of his robes, as if it is the dew of the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For the Lord, catch that, for the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Okay, we're talking about the oil dripping down in the Old Testament in the book of Psalm. That's referencing the oil dripping down the beard of Aaron, Moses' brother. But the scripture, Psalms clearly states that the oil doesn't come from Aaron. It comes from Yahweh. It comes from God. Aaron oh, is yeah. just the vessel. But what's happening now is leaders are taking that verse out of context and stating that, oh, no, the oil comes from within me, from God. God gives it to me, and then it comes internally through me, and then it pours out from me through to you. So if you want to get it, you can't get it straight from God. It comes internally from me, then out. It flows, thank you, Holy Spirit. God gives it to me internally, and then it flows outward from me, and then to you. No, I'm sorry. The, the scripture actually says, for the Lord bestows his blessing, not prophet so-and-so, says the Lord directly. Bestows his blessing. The Lord. It, and, and if you <clears throat> read the scriptures, you know, from the beard, the father's beard, beard. You know, it drips down to the oil of his son and from his yes. son to, to the children of Israel. Yeah. You know, and, and that's man, the it's it's sad. It's it just saddens my heart that you know these words are so holy and so righteous and man wants to pervert it you know, just so they can get pleasure or they can get their greed from mammon, you yeah. know, and just keep it. It says, believed. God gave me this word. Um, they will legitimately say false prophets will say it overflows to those who are under this covering or if you're attached to me, you will get it. And the Lord wanted me to tell his remnant. This is absolutely false teaching. The oil running down the downward actually demonstrates unity. The reason why the scripture says that it's, it's, running downward is because it demonstrates unity but that the source runs from the top down meaning it runs from yahweh and the oil didn't come from inside aaron 
his source was from outside of himself. It was extrinsic. It doesn't come from within him. The source is extrinsic, meaning from Yahweh. So preachers now are saying it comes internally from them and then they give it to other people. And scripture clearly states that his source was outside of himself. Outside of himself from above his own priesthood. It didn't come from, it didn't come to him because he had his own priesthood. The source was outside of himself above his own priesthood extrinsic given only from Yahweh the source is Yahweh not the vessel catch that the source is Yahweh not the vessel the vessel should be honored but the vessel is just the vessel the vessel is just the vessel keep the main thing the main thing keep the main thing the main thing Jesus Christ not the vessel an impure vessel will lead you all the way back to them reroute you take you on a detour your life will be in shambles people are getting divorced that god never ordained to get divorced people are following false leaders that god never told them to follow people are sowing we have widows we have poor people we have single mothers sowing thousands that they don't have thinking they're gonna get oil thinking god told them to go to this person and they are being robbed and then they're coming to the rightful vessel because god is bringing them to us to deliver them because god is mad Sorry, that was Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No, no good, sister. I was like, that, that was the fire of the Lord. Yeah, no, He's exactly. not happy. That is righteous anger. He's turning the tables that people that are exploiting the church and exploiting, they're exploiting widows. They're exploiting single moms. So be like, I sold thousands. And, and, and he, I, you know, he, he I know. <clears throat> One of the things that upsets him is that when he, when he forms, I okay, I, I know where you're going with this. I think Holy Spirit. Um, but he's upset when he has put together oh, eyes. a household, right? Mm -hmm. And it just upsets him when, you know, you have these false prophets who haven't dealt with their own issues. Mm. They haven't dealt with their own issues. You have prophets operating out of bitterness. You have oper uh, some operating on from ego. You have some operating out of error and they, they can't catch it, you know? Um, you have others who haven't handled a, a proper divorce, let's mm -hmm. say. So in their eyes, because they got divorced, they probably thought it was God's way, but they were probably being misled by another prophet say, oh, get divorced. And now they're coaching and, and prophesying, well, the Lord tell me that you need a, the, when our reality, if you look at a prophet, right? And again, we're going back to uh, that first word, anyone, whether it be a pastor, evangelist, teacher. Yeah, anybody in ministry. Anyone you come into ministry, we're yeah. all about restoration. Yeah. We're all about, okay, wow. When when I get heavy assignments or, you know, I ask the Lord, wow, Lord, how can we restore this? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, we'll strategically put a plan together and, and build from there. But the, the bottom line is that God is a God of restoration. Why would he destroy your house? I've seen children in the spirit crying because they want mommy and daddy back together, you know, but because daddy heard a prophet or mommy heard a prophet say, no, that this is, you know, they're weeping. Don't like, we're, we're actually like, well, now I'll say we, because that's not my body, but I understand what Christ is coming from because they're trying to illegal. So I'm, I know, I'm going to get to that later on. Um, they're illegally attaching themselves to the body, right? And they're they're just destroying people's lives. So if you have anyone giving you a contradictory word that goes against restoration, bringing fullness and fullness, run, run. Oh. And I mean, I'll tell you right now. Not, okay. not every marriage can be saved. We just want to say that. So, yeah. I mean, we're not saying here, oh my God, if you got divorced, it's bad. Some some legit, straight legit, no, straight up with you. Like that wasn't thing. your that wasn't your ordained partner. You needed a divorce. Some will try to bring the restoration. If they yeah. can, that's a good look. You know, I prayed. I tried to pray for restoration. Uh, yeah. But the Lord showed me this and this about the husband or the wife. That's yeah, different. that's that's different. But, um, you just we have, have some... people getting divorced that they're they're 
their husband or their wife never cheated on them. Their husband or wife isn't a, a, isn't operating through a Jezebel spirit. They're, they, they, they are actually equally yoked, but they're being told that they're not equally yoked. Um, I mean, that's a completely different situation of I married the wrong person. This wasn't my God or Dean spouse. It didn't work out. Or my person is operating from a place of witchcraft and I married the wrong person. That's a different story. We have people who God actually did bring together and they're going through their seven year itch or they're going through, they're going through marital problems. Cause let's, let's be honest marriage is not easy um so they're going through their problems but they're being told like that's it throw in the towel that's not your god ordained spouse and because they're going to a prophet for counsel they're legitimately thinking oh they weren't my god ordained spouse the 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 prophet saw that's not my spouse but there's no there's no backup with that there's no he cheated on me she cheated on me there's no um they're bonafide witcher warlock and I probably shouldn't be with them. You know, there, there's none of that. It's just regular marital problems. I mean, and, and they're divorcing. Yeah. Cause, um, and, and again, it goes up. Uh... And then some of them actually end up partnering up with the people they've told to get divorced, which is. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> Tell me you have not seen that. Tell me you have not seen that. Prophet mm -hmm. so-and-so told me to get divorced. Um, oh and, and then you end up you end up magically being with them and it's like it's like okay like i could see it i'm not crazier stuff has happened maybe god you know sometimes you were married to the wrong person and god links you up with a person of ministry crazier things have happened so that's not off the chart but some of these people had really nice spouses they were they that were actually serving christ there was no bona fide excuse <laughs> yeah. and it's like uh i don't get it and they literally just go off that prophetic word. Well, I was told that they weren't my spouse, but they didn't cheat on you. No, you weren't having extreme problems. No, they just weren't giving me the attention I didn't want. The attention I, I needed. You know, um, <laughs> I, I see why you guys came before this. Um. You know, a real prophet or anyone that's, well, you know, <clears throat> but more or less, let, let, let's talk about the prophets. One, one who's really in the office, when they encounter a problem like this, they seek counsel from the elders in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If someone is giving you advice without seeking wise counsel, <clears throat> They were never in the office to begin with. Mm -hmm. Just playing pretend. Yeah. I mean, that we do that in ministry. If I have a heavy assignment, I don't ever make decisions by myself. If I have a very heavy assignment that's going to impact something on a, I'm going to be honest, because that's where God has elevated this ministry to. If God has given us an assignment for the entire team, but it started off with me and it's a national assignment or it's a global assignment, I'm not ever like, hey guys, I handled that. That's what I heard from the Lord. I took care of it. No, God might start with giving me the instructions first and then we have team meetings and then I'm conferring with them. What do you hear from the voice of the Lord? Rachel, what do you hear? Samuel, what do you hear? And we need to make sure we are in one accord per Romans, the book of Romans, being in one accord to make sure we're hearing everything so that I'm not operating like some freaking vigilante thinking I'm yeah. hearing from the voice of the Lord and it's not... I got to confirm with the apostle. I got to confirm with the evangelist that we are on point operating in unison because we are actually, I, I'm just, I'm just saying we do a lot of stealth moves, but we've been called to dismantle some pretty stuff at the pretty big stuff at the global level already. It's not for everybody's ears, but, um, but we do it, but I'm never saying I got this plan. We're meeting here and this is how we're going to do it. It's like, I got this brother. What did you get? Yeah, I can, I, I can confirm that. And that's how we need to handle that. Or we're just communicating with each other. Even if we have an assignment, someone that comes to us for healing or deliverance, we are in active communication about that person um, to make sure that we are getting the same instructions on how to deliver that person. Because it's called seek ye first the kingdom. We are all part of his kingdom. And be like, and Rachel will be like, yeah, I heard that. That's how we need to tackle that one. That one's healing deliverance is only going to be tackled through prayer and fasting, brother. Yeah, I heard we got to fast. Okay, 
oh, we need to fast for that person for seven days before we can have them on Zoom before we do their healing and deliverance. Okay, we're going to calendar this date. I don't ever just say, I fasted for them for such and such dates and this is how we're going to handle it. And so be it. I re or I never actually come to you guys and be like, I already handled it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> one will, will see counsel. You know, um, as you're speaking, the Lord's just showing me genuine prof like genuine prophets of his but they're just alone um mm -hmm. if you watch this lord says it's time to uh regroup with those mm -hmm. he once had you with um you will be polished yeah in your ways i i um Correction is never a bad thing. That's what I'm just here. Correction is never a bad thing. Um, mm -hmm. But being a loner or a self prophet is not good. And I'm I'm hearing I have many genuine prophets who are in the office, but they have been taught that being in stealth mode is always better. And when they're in stealth mode or they're operating mm -hmm. alone. Um, they tend bitterness tends to 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 creep in. Uh, loneliness tends to creep in. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Also, Torah I get it. Before we teamed up, I was operating alone. You were operating yeah. alone. Yeah. Um, but we, but we knew. Like I knew, I had that prophetic word that I would not be alone forever. That my tribe was coming. I got that word. I launched the ministry in 2018 along with the business. But by 2019, I had you are operating in stealth mode and I'm going to keep you hidden. But I have the word that to everything, there's a season daughter. It won't be forever. So I had tangible knowledge by faith, by, by the Lord's word of knowledge to me that I wasn't going to be operating like this forever because it wasn't healthy. Like it was for a season to launch, but that I would be linked up and same for you. I remember reading your post brother and you were like, I'm waiting for my tribe. I'm waiting for my tribe. And I was like, <laughs> Rachel and I would be like, yeah. Be like, oh, can we release <laughs> when you got the word on 2019 i remember 2009 i was i want to say uh because brother did it brother did it no yeah saying i'm going to he said uh starting today kingdom lifestyle and authority sounds manifesting christ and yeah. affirm family ministries will be one i'm like okay but I don't get it. I'm still praying for them on this side, but I, I got it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I mean, sometimes we would like, this was way before, like, I think in early, like 2018 or 19. And we would read some of your posts and be like, I'm just prophesying alone or I'm alone. But Rachel knew, like Rachel knew we were going to like form a five full team and stuff. And um, like, we knew that you were going to be a part of it, but we couldn't reveal it to you yet. Yeah. But Rachel and I would be just like, we would feel so bad. We'd be like, oh, pobrecito, pobrecito. Like, he's here. He's here waiting for his team to be like, your team is here. Your team is here. We're here. We're here. We're here. <laughs> but like, we knew behind, and, and we didn't know behind the scenes. Like he was always like, your ministry of from family ministries was when I was operating alone sister it was always on my heart to like undergird and pray and it was like well you didn't know your ministry was always we were always undergirding and praying and you didn't know that we had firsthand knowledge that you were going to be our covering you were going to be our apostle we just couldn't release it to you yet um and then of course like I understand why we couldn't release it because we had so many other things that we were contending with with people not being obedient and then the reformation of of reforming it from 7 down to 5 because you know people have free will and I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. so that's why like it couldn't actually come together but uh he he fulfilled his word but I knew that I knew that there was a time and a season for me to operate alone and then eventually I was only operating alone for a little bit. And then uh, Rachel came alongside and then after her, then my mom joined and it was us uh, operating as three ladies. Um, and then we would just, we would always pray because we would always have men coming that needed help. And we would be like, okay, I know what the word of God says. Like I can help men, but I'm limited. There's a boundary. Thank you, Jesus. There's a boundary that I can only help men to a certain extent because I give reverence and honor to the Lord. I'm never going to cross that boundary. Um, I can't really be alone with the man and counsel them. It's just not wise in ministry. There was, a, I was thinking, Holy Spirit, I was limited in the amount of capacity that I could reach ministry wise. Um, 
so we Rachel and I would always be behind the scenes and we'd be like, we're just so grateful when, when Apostle Samuel comes because we can finally reach a bigger audience and then he can help <laughs> us with all the manly stuff that we need to like, we, we need to tackle and handle because there's real legitimate man issues that men are having that we could not, we, we couldn't say like, okay, we're going to refer you to this member on our team to help you or email him because that wasn't even an option, but um, it was for a season. So I so just, we, I feel like God wants us to touch on this because there are people and, and ministers yeah, and operating genuine. alone. They're genuine. And, you won't um, be alone gonna... forever. God has that word for you. You will not be alone forever. God has your tribe. God sees you. God wants me to tell you, God sees you. God hears you. Uh, prophets that are being undergirded, that he is rising up. Young ministers, you are not alone operate by faith. If he has told you to launch that ministry and you know that, you know, that you're operating from a pure place, it will not be forever. He is just thinking, well, he's preparing those people who are going to come alongside you behind the scenes because, um, Sammy was being groomed before he could join us. I was being groomed. I had to go through healing and deliverance for a lot of things that, um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be as accurate and precise and as, you know, mature in Christ as I am today operating that I would have been like five or six years ago. The same thing with Rachel, you know, we all had to go through our layers of healing and deliverance and we still do praise God. Like I, we make no bones about it. Like when I say I got issues, we all got issues. I am no one to say like, I went through all my healing and deliverance and I'm never going to need any again. Yeah, I call that a lot. I, I, yeah, I know. Speak on it, my son. Oh, I am faulty, beautiful. and I just went through some more healing and deliverance because some yeah. stuff went, some yeah. stuff legitimately went down with me, and I was like, that hurt me. I have a soul wound because of that, because of what that person did to me. I am going to have to go through healing and deliverance, and I had to pray and fast for that healing and deliverance, but I had to do it. I wasn't like, oh, I'm absolved. I don't need to go through that healing and deliverance. If you're a minister and you think you don't need to go through more healing or deliverance, or there's this mega movement now of wield your words. I'm not saying life and power isn't in your tongue, but there's a lot of people operating ministry that be like, the devil can't touch me. I just need to wield my words and cast these thoughts out, cast them down, cast them down to the vain imagination and they'll be gone in Jesus name. Honey, bunny, sir, ma'am, you need your healing and deliver. You, yes, you need to wield your words. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that I'm not taking away, but sir, ma'am, if you want to level up and operate to the new place that God has you, you need to be about Jesus's business and you need to get your healing and deliverance because it's wield your words and it's healing and deliverance. I've seen plenty, plenty, plenty. Of <laughs> just be positive and cast it down and you'll be okay. I don't need the healing and deliverance. I just I've spoke had, it. I've had a I, have, I really had to do deliverance over the phone, through text messages, to prophets and just regular believers, especially with the prophets, because a lot of prophets think that, oh, I'm a prophet. I walk with God. I talk with God. I'm okay. You know, but at the same time, during that conversation, the Holy Spirit's like, okay, you're hanging with the big bro, but I need to... You know, you got some issues with your soul. You got some issues that you need to resolve. And I need a cast. I need a prune. And we don't give the Holy Spirit that time to do it. And I've, man, I've seen prophets that are what, what, what's going on? I'm like, told you. I like, you know, like, this is what happens. You have some bitterness still going on. You know what I mean? And and you didn't let it go. You know, this is why you're always, you know, speaking like this or feeling this kind of way. Or like, this is the reason why you take everything personal, you know, because if someone's speaking truth, you're taking it personal. Mm -hmm. or, it's a soul wound. Or it's because there's, there's a wound there, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's you not bring up a good point, brother. In my first three years of ministry, when I was anointed, I wasn't appointed yet. I wasn't appointed, but I was okay. anointed. I mean, I, I knew it was different since I was little, but you know what I'm saying? Like in mm -hmm. adulthood appointed to, I was anointed to the mantle of a prophet, but I wasn't appointed. I was anointed. It was like 20, like 2013. Those first three years were extremely beautiful, but I got to tell you those first three years of after being anointed, they was hellish. I mean, I was sick all the time. Devil was playing tricks on my mind. I had anxiety. I had panic. I couldn't sleep at night. I had night terrors. Why? Because I had just been anointed to the office. 
I was throwing up all the time. I couldn't eat. I couldn't keep anything down. Um, and the Lord will always be like, it's all right, daughter. It's okay. It's okay, baby girl. It's okay, baby girl. It's just another layer of deliverance. And I'd be like, bleh, bleh. like things would make me sick. Or like, I would think about, I would think about something in my past that bothered me from like in the early 2000s or in the 2010s. And here we were in like 2012 or 2013. And all of a sudden, like, I would think of something and I realized, oh my God, I had PTSD. And then I'd run to the bathroom because I would have a panic attack. Lord, like, you need deliverance from that. And I would, I would literally, so I finally got to the point where I was like, I would stop crying over and be like, every time I would start to get a panic attack, I'd be like, thank you, Jesus, for highlighting that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for highlighting that. I'm no longer going to be upset that I'm sick because I know it will last 24 hours and I will get through it. I know you're highlighting this panic because I have a soul wound from a past relationship and I can't enter or help people through this until I'm delivered from itself. I mean, I'm just because... People have this misconception that just because you're del- just because you're out of a marriage or just because you're out of a relationship that you're healed, most of the trauma and PTSD comes after. Um, so I like I think I got out of my abusive like emotionally abusive relationship in twenty I think it was like in twenty eleven or twenty ten. And here it was like 20, 13 years later. And I wasn't like bona fide still living in the past, but there's what we call remnants remnants okay and remnants are real people i could go about my day doing my nine to five job regularly with no problem so the problem with remnants is you can function fairly well but at some point people you still need to handle the remnants because if you don't handle the remnants they will wear their ugly head and they will detour detour you from being able to operate effectively as a minister so i was still able to function normally but i still have those remnants of ptsd for my past so the lord would just gracefully bring them up and i'd be like oh my god i'm triggered and then i'd be eating and then i'd have like a panic attack or something i'd be like oh my god and then i'd be like sick through the night dry heaving and i'd be spitting up and i was like you're just getting out those unclean spirits i went through that for like three years be like i don't know if i was going or coming and finally i got the hint of another layer but I cannot tell you the freedom that was waiting for me on the other end I I would not be able to be sitting here today if I had ignored it and been like I don't have a problem I just changed my thought process it's all in the mind because there's that school of thought and ministry that the battlefield's in the mind which no it's true the battlefield is in the mind but the battlefield's in the mind and you also need to wield your words and get deliverance Okay, I had to change my thought process the closer I built my relationship with Jesus, but I also still needed to go through the deliverance. Sometimes that was spinning up. Sometimes it was dry heaving. It wasn't a pretty Natalie, okay? But uh, I being, I keep it real. I keep it real. I mean, I've been with Rachel the first few years of when she was anointed and she went through some stuff and be like, it's okay, sister. It's okay. Let it out. Let it out. I don't feel good. Let it out. Or if it wasn't let. I remember I was laid out on the floor Mm -hmm. and I could just hear all this stuff being taken off of me, what I was Mm -hmm. delivering from. And I was just spitting up all this and just throwing up all this stamp. It was at least for a good half hour, 45 minutes. And the people were like, um, a lot of the pastors, prophets and apostles were like telling my boy, it's okay. He's being delivered because they're like, it's good. It's good. My mom's on the floor and what's going on? All (laughs) these people are over me just pulling and delivering me off of all this stuff that was uh, on me Mm -hmm. and I was like wow so they just spit it out just spit up they were just bringing all these paper towels and and tissues and everything it was just all coming out and I was like wow but it's good because you can't operate you have authority what you overcome you don't have authority when you when you haven't been I mean you do I mean essentially you do in Christ Jesus is core of Christ but you know what I'm saying you have even more authority thank you Jesus when you overcome something so the purpose of him overcoming something of, of him delivering you so you can help other people I can help other people now understand because I've been through certain things and I've overcome it but there is a heavy philosophy in today's uh pastors and preachers where they don't believe in healing and deliverance. They believe if they got out of the situation that it's been dealt with and I just need to wield my words and they don't understand you're leading people astray because things are coming out of your mouth that are hurting other people because you haven't dealt with your stuff. There is a heavy school uh, and I'm getting off topic because we're talking about false prophets, but I feel like the Lord wants me to touch on this right now. Holy Spirit's taking over. There's there's the false prophets who like put on shows, but there's also that school of thought with ministers who don't believe in that at all. And they don't believe in healing and deliverance. And they feel like I just need to wield my words and I'm good. 
and they're secretly causing trauma to other people because they haven't dealt with their own trauma. Yeah. Yeah. I would be I would be leading people astray right now. I would be a bitter Betty. I would be a bitter Betty. After all, I got to be honest with you. My life hasn't been a cupcake and roses. I'm just going to be honest with you. I've had some crazy experiences in my life and I am I am not perfect. <laughs> Rachel's like <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, I am not perfect by any means, but um, I'm not trying to toot my horn, but I toot my horn, but I am a sweetheart in relationships. I really am. I'm a genuine loving person, but um, and I have my flaws, but despite that, I've had a lot of wrong done to me by men over the years of ju- by just me being kind. And I gotta tell you, if I hadn't forgiven, if I hadn't gone through healing and deliverance of the soul wounds that these men had caused me, or or not been open to recognizing the part that I played in it because love is a two-way street and relationships are a two-way street whether it's a relationship or just a friendship through a two-way street if I wasn't susceptible to receiving the healing deliverance from what they caused me or being open to getting the healing and deliverance and the awareness of the role that I played in it I would be a bitter Betty and I would be man hating and I would be telling everybody don't get married don't get married I don't believe in marriage marriage is not for you Men, men are this, men are that. I would be doing case studies on every man. And um, I mean, <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. Sorry, sorry, some people in my life because by default, they do get Professor Nat sometimes just because I am a professor of psychology. So sorry about that. It's kind of my nature just a little bit, but I would be, what I'm trying to say is I would be far worse if I hadn't gotten my healing dinners. I'd be a bitter Betty and I would be I would be man hating in my lectures at work on men. I would never have believed in marriage. I would have not thought that marriage was something that was for me. And I would never have been able to bring myself to a place to love somebody unconditionally. And I would be constantly steering people in wrong in marriage. And I would think every man is a narcissist. And I would think that every every woman has had something done wrong to them. And I would be leading people down the wrong path if I wouldn't have gone healing and deliverance I could generally say I've done my healing and deliverance I would say all the time in my ministry I love the men I love the men in my life I'm grateful for them I honor them I respect them I recognize the different toll it takes on a man to be the head of household I understand the differences that men go through in ministry versus women going through it in ministry. I honor and respect the men in my life. I respect that in a marriage, the man is the head of the household. I respect that in marriage, you need to be equally yoked. I respect that the father plays a certain role in the household as well as the wife. I would not be in that space to be giving counsel to people. Even in my lectures at work or just wise counsel as a minister to people, I would like seriously be mad hating if I hadn't gone through everything. Like I would be, I would probably even be hating on on, on men in my family, um, thinking that every man is the same. And I don't. I have been able to forgive people in their life la- that have done wrong to me. I have I've <laughs> I've even gotten to the lovely place of being able to love unconditionally. As Jesus does, crucify yourself to the flesh daily. Yeah. yeah. So um, that is progress. And we have a lot of pastors and people in ministry who don't do that anymore, right, guys? They just believe, wield your words, wield your words. And they're, yeah. they're meeting with people privately to counsel them as pastors or coaches or whatever. And they're leading people astray. Leading people astray because their own soul wounds are coming out. Oh, <clears throat> Ask the Holy Spirit, where do I lack in my area of growth? Mm. Where do I need pruning? Um, I've been asking that for a while. Apparently, I got hit up with the triple seven this week. Full rest of the I'm like, okay, so I'm fully restored. All right, fine. Mm. Um, but yeah, man, in, in, in order for me to, like for now, um, I know I, I get so hated lately because Lord has been just pushing me to bring out correction in, into the body. Right. Mm-hmm. I go back to uh, to when I was in Mexico when I was pleading. You know, the Lord said, mm-hmm. "Okay." So I understood. It. In order for me to bring out correction, I had to go through errors. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember 2019. I'm like, Lord, man, 
remove any error. I feel like I'm walking a lot of errors, and sure enough, he was doing it. He did it. He pulled me, and I told him, pull me away from anyone, any, and he started pulling me from this pastor, that pastor, this prophet, that prophet, this apostle, that teacher, and mm -hmm. the thing is this, this is what I noticed, carnal flesh in the mind. Anytime I saw someone speaking truth, automatically get in defense mode. Wow. Because I wanted to defend that truth that was an error. So the Holy Spirit was like, why are you correcting the errors that I am trying to correct? Mm -hmm. So that you can bring that correction on to others. Yeah. Oh, my whole Homer Simpson, you know. Do, uh, <laughs> I didn't, uh, my, yeah, sorry. the wise. You know, that's what he does sometimes. Um, the wise person in ministry. Thank you, Jesus. What Samuel is trying to say is the wise person in ministry will adamantly let you know they're not perfect. And they will lead you, but they will still lead you back to Jesus. But they will also tell you. I am not above course correction and the wise prophet, the wise pastor, the wise preacher, the wise teacher will be open to course, course correction. Yes. They have exactly. a teachable spirit. They have a teachable spirit. Um, but uh, going back to uh, the false prophets, it keeps highlighting. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we're going to close it with this or what. Yeah, it is. That's what I feel. He's going to close it up. And then I feel brother that you have to pray for a, a prayer of repentance for those to do a U-turn yeah, yeah. that he yeah, still yeah. has in ministry. That he wants Both to save by grace. That are still operating in ministry, but have they're oh, yes, yes, they're not yes. operating because they're sent and they're in witchcraft. They once were operating from a pure place, but he wants them to do a U turn. Okay. He's still extending that grace. He wants you to pray a prayer. Uh, excuse me, at the end to lead them to a place of repentance. Yes, yes. So um, this is a word I had last year. Last year I was under heavy attack. Uh, you know, uh, so I didn't release it, but you know. He's allowed me to release this today. So before Amen. I even release what he wants me to say, I'm going to go to Ezekiel uh, chapter 13. Um, and I'm just going to read from the Amplified, amplified Version. Um, False prophets condemned. Mm. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, oh, I just lost my heart. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesied. And say to those who prophesy from their own inspiration or imagination, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, woe, judgment is coming. To the foolish prophets who are following their own spirit, claiming to have seen things, but have in fact seen nothing. Mm. Oh, Israel, your prophets have been like foxes among the wolves. You have not gone up into the gaps or breaches nor built the wall around the house of Israel that it might stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. They have seen falsehood and lying divination saying the Lord says but the Lord has not sent them. Yet they hope and make men to hope for the confirmation of their word. Did you not see make up a false vision and speak a lying divination when you said the Lord declares, but it is not I who have spoken. Therefore, says, therefore, thus says the Lord, because you have spoken empty and delusive words and have seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, says the Lord God. So my hand will be against the counterfeit prophets who see, make up empty and delusive visions and who give lying prophecies. They will have no place in the secret council of my people, nor will they be recorded in the register of the house of Israel, mm. nor will they enter into the land of Israel, that you may know without any doubt that I am the Lord God. It is definitely because they have seduced my people saying peace when there is no peace. Mm -hmm. And because one builds a flimsy wall, behold these lions, prophets plaster it over with whitewash so tell those who plaster it with whitewash that it will fall a flooding rain of judgment will come and you oh great hailstones will fall and a violent wind will tear the wall apart behold when the wall has fallen will you not be asked where is the coating with which you prophets plastered it therefore thus says the lord God, 
I will make a violent wind break out in my wrath, and there will be in my anger an overwhelming rain and great hailstones to destroy that wall in wrath. So I will tear down that I will tear down the wall which you have plastered with whitewash and bring it down to the ground, so that it's so that its foundations will be exposed. When it falls, you will perish in the midst, and you shall know and understand fully that I am Lord. Thus, I will expend my wrath on the wall and on those who have plastered with whitewash. And I will and I will say to you, the wall is gone, and its plasters are gone, along with the false prophets of Israel who prophesied deceitfully to Jerusalem and who see false visions of peace for her when there is no peace, says the Lord God. Now you son of man, set, set your face against the daughters of your people who are prophesying out of the wishful thinking of their own mind, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Prophesy against them and say, thus says the Lord God, woe to the woman who fasten magic, protective charms on all wrists and make veils for their heads of those of every stature to capture human lives. Will you capture the lives of my people, but keep your own? You have profaned me among my people in payment for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, killing people who should not die and giving a guarantee of life to those who should not live. Because of your lies to my people who pay attention to lies, therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against your magic bands and veils by which you hunt human lives as birds and will tear them from your arms. And I will let the lives you hunt go free, even those lives whom you hunt as birds. I will also tear off your pagan veils and rescue my people from your hands. And they will no longer be in your grip to be hunted and trapped. Then you will know without any doubt that I am the Lord because you dishearten the righteous with falsehood when I did not cause him grief, but have encouraged the wicked, but have encouraged the wicked not to turn from his wicked way and preserve his life. Therefore, you women will no longer see false visions or practice divinations, and I will rescue my people from your hand. Then you will know without any doubt that I am the Lord. Now, a um, quick highlight. I know this is from the Old Testament, but we are in the New Jerusalem. That's what God is building. Yeah. So there will be no place for you. you uh, short aesthetics. You're condemned. There's no place for you in the New Jerusalem. This is what the Lord was highlighting to me as I was reading. Mm -hmm. There is no place for you false prophets. You have been condemned. Yeah. You have been condemned. Also, to Ramashi. We have another team member joining us. Hey, Harmony. 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 <laughs> she represents our animal kingdom. She's very much part of our team. She sees she angels is. in the spirit realm. She barks at them. She's just a little baby. Mm -hmm. uh, but when she's not operating <laughs> from oh, her little right. lion, she's a brat. But, anyways, go ahead, brother. So now that I read that, um, this is the word. Okay, so speak to all the prophets and women prophets who prophesy on the hour every hour. Oh, they have to repent. If not, they will know I am God. I will not allow for my children to be deceived in this hour. My remnants have come to clean house, the holy house of Israel. Israel, tell them there is no peace but in me in these last days. Christian mystics, you are playing with fire. The Lord will send his wrath, for you are deceiving his holy righteous children. Repent now, says the Lord Almighty. I am revealing myself in his very last hour, and no one will be able to say otherwise. Just look around, and you will see me everywhere. But most importantly, many of you will see me in the temple of the holies, my remnants. Those who have given up their flesh and titles to let me dwell and live inside them. And that, that was the word that the Lord has given me. So now here to the Christian mystics, not all, some. Some. Come back to your first love. 
Um, come back to your first love. Once again, you prophets who prophesy on the hour, every hour. I'm That's a red gonna... flag. That is a red flag, guys. If they are prophesying and popping up videos like multiple times a day saying they got words of the Lord. Or if a breakthrough's coming. <laughs> Breakthrough can happen any day. Any day, yeah. So, <laughs> like I, these are not my words. These are not my words. I always, these are the words of the Lord. I Amen. again I was supposed to release this last year, and I didn't like I, I didn't know I was going to wear this shawl today. I had no intentions. This was last, like, well, last minute thing last night. Um, and then that's when the Lord told me, I'm going to redeem you because I did repent when I found these notes. I'm like, man, I you're was like, oh, I was disobedient. I did not release yeah, the word so of, so the of chastisement said, no. that I was supposed to release. Yeah, I will redeem you because he knew the attacks I was, I was going through so much. Yeah. Um, so now as I was reading this, I was just literally seeing him there. Um, now, when I was reading Ezekiel, um, the Lord said that they would have no place in, the, in their council. And it's it's kind of funny that Moses, <laughs> Enoch and them came to me before we even started this meeting. Um, because Moses did, uh, that's why I felt the, the ground, the very ground my feet are on shake because he took his staff and he struck it hard. Um, that's very similar to the word I just preached on a few days ago which the Lord said these people will come to me and they will say I came in the name of the Lord and I will tell my remnant I never sent them I had these following prophets come to me Samuel so funny I didn't even know he had a sense of humor Samuel's like hey Samuel it's me Samuel <laughs> um, tell, the, tell them the prophets are not to charge he never charged. If anything, wherever he went, people would make him food, right? Yeah. Would make food, you know, which is different, but you know, but don't charge. Then Elijah. <laughs> Both Elijah, Elijah and Elisha. <laughs> it is God who provides our needs, not man. Mm -hmm. So once again, God can use man to provide that. But we don't go begging. You know, no. if God says release this, release it, or whatever, just go yeah. ahead and do it, and He will. I thank you. You want me to release this? So when I was being discipled, this was how God took care of me. I had a sister in Christ who uh, who paid, and um, as we were in the mall, this was the like actually putting going out, being laying hands on a sick. I had approximately a hundred and twenty dollars left, right, mm -hmm. from the whole trip spending money. So we're we're at the mall. And while we're at the mall, I saw these two young kids. Right after we were praying for people, I saw these two young kids heavily on drugs. And every time I wanted to approach them, boom, they'll disappear. So I just stood by the escalator. I said, "Lord, let it be Your will," because I can relate and I want to minister to them. Yeah. Sure enough, we meet as a team, and when we met as a team, I'm sitting on this side of the table, and my teammates are on this, and we're just. You know, yeah, sharing testimonies. Well, you did this. Yeah, I saw this happen. And, and sure enough, as we're sharing those, two young men come in between our tables and we stopped them. The one I wanted to minister came to my side of the table and the other one went to the other side. So the one that was on my side, I noticed he was hungry. He was sharing his testimony. It was so relatable that yeah. I said, well, let me buy you something to eat. Now, granted, yes, the Lord did use my sister Christ, the one who ended up baptizing me. Um, yes, you know, she, she did pay for the, for, for the classes, you know, because the Lord had put it in her heart. It wasn't just for me, but another brother in Christ who was with us at that time. And so again, I had only $120. So I knew he was hungry. I knew what he was going through. I've been there. And so I was like, let's buy you food, part of food. Let's buy you clothes, like just spending money. And I'm forgetting that I only had $120 until I said, here, I'm going to buy you more food so you can have more food for you and your home. And when I look, I'm looking at all these these receipts. There's more than a hundred dollars I've 
spent and I'm still at $120. So what God was doing supernaturally was providing and making sure I will go out. Why? Because freely I had received, freely I will give. So what I'm trying to relay with this with this word is this. If you have a word that you're going to release to a person, right? Just just give it freely. Yeah. You know, don't expect nothing in, in return for it. You know, um, if you get a breakthrough, you know, you the same breakthrough you have. Thank you, the Uber driver. That's another one. Uh, the Uber driver I had, but it hit the seven seven. I said, "Well, I don't know if you believe." He goes, "Yeah, those are angelic numbers." I said, "No, those are God's numbers." And uh, so, because he's telling me, because he, the Holy Spirit's been talking to me, and again, I don't care if you believe or don't believe, but I'm the one that's believing. I'll believe for you right for now. You. And, <laughs> right. And he's looking at me like, so I told him, I've been told that I've received full restoration, right? So in the name yeah. of Jesus Christ, and I freak bumped at him, right? So I already know that contact with the Holy Spirit from here is going to contact. I'm basically sparking his Holy Spirit that he doesn't even know he has. Igniting him. I'm igniting him. So I told him, my breakthrough is now your breakthrough. Amen. And because the Lord has fully restored me in the name of Jesus Christ, you too are fully restored. So I had freely received, I freely gave. Okay, so it doesn't yeah. have to be financial, but at the end, you know, that God will provide like he did with Elijah, you know, he sent the birds, he sent the meat, and, um, and then I had, okay, Enoch. <laughs> Enoch, um, had this message to say, many wolves have claimed the office of the prophetic, but they are that, wolves. Wolves. Um, then Moses, that's when he <laughs> uh, struck uh, the staff on the ground a little while ago before we started. There's Moses. Tell the true prophets, judgment has been, been set. And I, now I understand the word that was just released. Um, the words that will be released is their chance to repent. If not, they will no longer be in the office. Then, uh, I love you, Lord of Lord. I just love you. <laughs> um, Jesus, have I not? Okay, so, yeah, Jesus said, have I not drawn a line in the sand? My grace is sufficient, but many are being devoured. I shall scatter them like I did with the children of Israel. Now, I've been telling people, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't tell you what's going to happen to this nation. I'm not going to dive in there, but. Yeah, we're not going there. I'll, re I'll release that then. I've seen military coming. Yeah. When? I don't know. But I just say it like this. If it's peace, peace, peace. It's not going to be peace. So just, just beware, just like Ezekiel 13, many are prophesying peace, peace, peace. And when people don't see peace, they're going to come claiming to these prophets, but you said there was peace. Peace. Oh, my God. We already saw that so much with the elections. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Um, oh, well. <laughs> so that's we won't what go I there. Mean. That's what I had released. Yeah, I was going to go there and hold space. No, 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 not, not yeah. the time. No. So why don't we go ahead and close with a, a prayer leading for prayer um, for repentance. Yeah. So um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, first and foremost, um, I want to forgive. Um, you have placed us in that seat to forgive those who, who have sinned, not only yes. you know, against us, but against you. And there are many prophets, whether thank you, this is deep. Many prophets are really sinning against you and who you are, you know. Um so we forgive them first and foremost. Holy Spirit, I, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Father, I ask that they seek this repentance. That these words, once again, these, these words that we shared, these are gentle words. I mean, to the carnal ear and the carnal mind right now, it's just probably seeing it as an enmity because God is speaking, mm -hmm. you know. So, but you know, we tell that carnal mind, which I like, I like to call it pepper. We tell pepper to calm down in the name of Jesus Christ. And you submit to the Holy Spirit to that individual right now. So that way, Holy Spirit can ring these words as truth. 
So if they want to touch the spirits, Holy Spirit, and they may do so in the name of Jesus. So I just want to call forward for all those who, who, who want to receive repentance. And if you, you're feeling the conviction to be repented right now, the Lord says, there's no more blemish. Come seek me and teach my children to seek me. And go back and take everything you have illegally stolen with your false lies. Take back and make it right. Take back to those who you have taken and make it right. Ask those who you have lied to and have made a profit. <clears throat> Ask them for your forgiveness. And if they still hold a grudge for bitterness, if they so smack you or hit you, in anger because they see you as a deceiver. These are the words that the Lord is saying right now. Turn the other cheek. Walk away and know that you had made everything right in my eyes and there's no more blemish. But make right your wrong. Soto Oh, Holy Spirit, we release. We release a conviction of grace. We release a conviction of grace. All these words, these words are full of your glory, Father. We fill them and we cover them up. We cover them up with your living. We cover them up with your living truth, but most importantly, we cover them with your life so that you can give life back to those who are prophesying death. Death meaning lies. Death meaning sins. We thank you, Father, in the name yes, of Jesus. Lord. Mm -hmm. these, these are the prayers from pure hearts, Father. Yes, Lord. And Holy Spirit, if there's anyone right now, any Father right now who is hurt, so begin to prove away whatever's causing your hurt. So I just come, oh, okay, I see. I, I command every unclean spirit to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Out. out. You will no longer be the whisperer. For our battle is not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities. And you principalities, you have led many astray. You have led many astray. And the Lord says it stops here. You fear the remnants of God. You fear the remnants of God because we release truth with living glory. It is a glory that I see that is suffocating you right now as we're speaking. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you're doing. That was powerful. Thank you, brother. Again, I forgot about that note. The Lord said, don't forget about the word of Ezekiel. 
don't forget about the Ezekiel word. Yeah. Well, you had been holding on to it, brother, since last year. So, yeah. Well, that was heavy. I hope that that gave some practical steps and some really relevant information to to a lot in the body right now that are probably going through a lot and probably being deterred. Some of them probably already have the inclination that something is not right here, but a lot of them may have no inclination and need are being steered the wrong way. And I mean, I legitimately hear the Lord saying right now, I hear the word life savings and this appalls me. Some people are legitimately giving away their life savings to these ministers when God has not called them to do that. I'm not saying that if you're well off and God tells you to honor a vessel, he could tell you to give hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's that's not beyond God. If God wants yeah. to do that, he could do it. I'm not saying he will never tell anyone to do that. But there are people being sold out because the ministers that they follow are being sold out and people are giving away their life savings. So this was just, I know it was long, guys, but it was really, really heavy on our hearts to minister this word and give you a background of some of the things that we have been through personally that not just speaking out of air but um that this stuff does exist i've been through it sam has been through we've all been through it to some extent um and that has really solidified our mission to never operate from that standpoint but not only keep our place a purity and posture of our hearts in the right place and to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is Jesus Christ, but also to educate you guys on what to look for so that you're not falling prey to these things. Cause I mean, it is end times. I don't care in any way you want to slice the dice. It is end times. We don't know the hour. We don't know the time, but it is end times. Things are not getting better. People, people need to be saved and we have a task to do and we want to see as many people brought into the fold and in the kingdom as many can be, but many people are being led astray when it is not time to be led astray. It's, it's time to be led in the gate. Amen. It's time to be led in the gate and people are, are exploiting gifts and leading them astray. And that's exactly what we don't want them to see. So that's why we were so, we took so long, but we had so much to get so much to cover. Um, and we want to make sure that people brought in the fold instead of being drawn out. Um, because that's not God's way. That is definitely not God's way. Um, so we hope this blessed you. Uh, feel free to share the video to anyone that you think would benefit from this. Um, it was a long video. So even if you want to highlight the pinpoints and the minutes to where they need to watch, please feel free to do so. Thank you guys again. Um, we hope this blessed you and we'll see you guys next time. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.